<laughs> uh, and uh, welcome back to Music Theory. On this episode, we will be working out how to read the notes across the entire piano. By the end of this video, you will know all 88 notes. I will be able to point to a note and you will be able to recognize it, whether it's white or black. So first things first, we've got to break it down. The fundamental concepts, the fundamental rules of the piano and all of Western music is that it goes in a loop. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, exactly like the alphabet, and then it loops back round again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. For how many octaves there are on a piano, I don't actually know. So, you could learn exactly where A is. However, that always causes issues because who knows, you've, maybe you've got to find a note that's five notes away from A and therefore you've got to count up five just to find out what that note is and you don't learn fast that way. So we're gonna learn each note individually based on its position with the black notes. Sounds complicated, but it really is a lot easier than you might think. So let's get to this top down view where you can see everything and I will talk you through the story of the piano. So by story, I mean, I want you to imagine this whole thing is a street. And this street contains a multitude of houses. We've got every group of three black notes is a house. And next to the house, we've got a doghouse. And that's every group of two notes across the whole piano. Just have a look at your own piano and just sort of familiarize yourself with it. And who would live within a doghouse but a dog? So we take our doghouse and we go within it and we have a dog. What letters does dog begin with? Begins with a D. I'm trying not to be pedantic, but it turns to happen when you end up with a story like this. Anyways, I'm just gonna tell you it how I tell everyone, young or old. So, you've got a D who lives in the doghouse. And so, on the left of a doghouse lives the cat. And it's a weird street. On the right of a doghouse lives the elephant. So, first things first, go to your piano and find all of the dogs. There's one, there's one. Every group of two notes in between is the dog. To the left of each dog is a cat. I think there's one down here and there's one up there. Then you've got your elephants. To the right of every doghouse. Cool, that's already three notes out of a possible seven white notes. Yeah, there's only seven that you actually need to memorize. Cool, so we make our way to the house. Every house has a front door and that's at the start of the house. The note that's on the left, an F, front door. On the right of the house, we have the back door. So you've got the house on the left, front door, on the back, back door, make sense? Within the house, we've got, let's say, Gary. Gary lives in the house and he's standing right by the front door. So there's the front door and there lives Gary. And what is Gary eating? He's going to be eating today. I was tempted to say an anaconda, but that'd be a bit weird. Uh, avocado. So Gary, the millennial, is eating an avocado, which is oddly positioned right next to the back door. Either Gary lives in a really small house or that avocado is massive. Anyways, to reiterate, we've got the house, the three black notes, to the left of the black notes, we've got the front door, to the right, we've got the back door. Gary is in there eating his avocado or apple, sometimes an easier one to remember. So. Let's find all the front doors. There's one at the start, there's one at the start, there's, there's, there's the house, there's the house, there's the house, there's the house. Same with the back doors, I'll whiz through them. And we got a lot of Gary's. Gary's and apples can sometimes get very confusing. You've just got to remember that Gary is next to the front door and the apple or avocado is next to the back door. So I believe that's covered all of the white notes, the only odd ones out you might find are the ones right down at the end of the piano. 
and you can just work those out by thinking, right, here's the cat, because we know this is the doghouse. There's the dog, and the cat's to the left of that. And to the left of the cat, if we look at anything else, we see the house, and the back door is actually right next to the cat. So it's a B, just to the left of the cat, and then an A for apple or avocado right by the back door. That's covered. Ow. Every single white note. Simple as that, really. On top of that, we've got the black notes. They're really not as simple as you might think. No, that's completely opposite of what I meant to say. They're really not as difficult as you might think. So a black note is either a sharp or a flat. Did I just play the same note? Yes, because every black note has two names. If you start, let's start on, let's say, an F. And we go to the right of the piano, we're going up the pitch. To the right is a sharp, so you'd call it F sharp. If you started at G and sort of looked your way down the piano, getting lower, you call it a flat. So it could either be called an F sharp or a G flat. Same thing if we started on, let's say D, if we went up to the right to the black note, we would have a sharp, and to the left of E, we've got a flat. So it's either D sharp or E flat. You might be asking, well, why is there two different types? Well, there's something called scales. Scales have their own rules, and you can have scales that include lots of sharps and scales that include lots of flats. They sort of go in opposite directions and come back together again. I will get back to that at a later date, I promise. So, realistically, you can actually work out every single note on the piano now. You know every white note, we've got the dog, the cat and the elephant. Dog's in the middle of a dog house, cat to the left of a dog and elephant to the right of a dog. We've got the house. Front door at the left of a house, back door at the right of a house, and we got Gary eating his avocado by the front door and his avocado right by the back door. And then all the sharps and flats. A sharp is if you look right up the piano, going up the pitches, and a flat is if you go down left. A sharp looks like a hashtag, and a flat looks like a little B. I will show you these in later piano lessons. So after all that, there's actually only one fundamental note that I haven't told you. If you can work that out, it's a C, it's just to the left of a dog, but it's for one uniquely named note on the piano, middle C. That's where all of our reading, whether it's in the treble clef or the bass clef, sort of ends up being oriented. When you see that on the page, you know exactly where you are. So remember that, that pitch, remember that, because it's never going to change, that is middle C. So finally, we need to talk about how you're going to sit at the piano. You want to make sure that you're sitting in the middle by middle C, so then your hands have enough space to get to the ends or be right close up center. You want your hands to be arching up and your fingertips to be touching the piano. There's no point using your pads because you don't have enough room to really play much stuff if you're just using the pads. If you've got your hands curled up like that, then you can play things a lot quicker and you have a lot more flexibility for multiple chords. Same thing for the left hand, they're both going to be exactly the same. Never arc from back, you don't want your fingers going backwards, you want your knuckles having a nice curve. When it comes to height of the piano, this one's arguably a little bit high for me. You can see that my hands are having to lift up quite a bit just to get into position. If I was just a little bit taller, maybe that would be better. I'm sort of trying to look for kind of a right angle or hoping that my forearm is level instead of dropping down because this could actually cause me some arm ache after a while if I keep playing at this level but I'm doing it for the video. Is there anything else that you need to know? Well, when it comes to reading any piece of music if there's a number above a note that gives you what finger to use, follow it. 99% of the time or maybe 90% of the time that's going to be accurate and you'll want to stick to that. And when you've found that, get your hand into position and keep your fingers close to the keys. There's no point playing notes and your other fingers going crazy everywhere. Fix that now and keep your fingers stuck to the keys and you'll never have to think about it again and you'll be so much faster for it. If you, I might as well give you an example then. 
If I do this, my fingers barely lift from the keys. If I did, I can't even do it. That's not even an exaggeration. I can't do it if my fingers are flying away from the keys. They've got to be close. Otherwise, I don't have the speed. Right, I think that's pretty much covered everything. What am I talking about? Uh, so there's middle C, arching of the fingers, don't go back on themselves like that. You want your forearm level, tips of the fingers on the keys, and if you find a finger position or you're told a finger position, stick to it and get your fingers resting on the keys. Never have them floating away when you're playing a piece of music because that just makes life more difficult. You've now learned all of the white notes, all of the black notes, and to be honest, I think this is quite a productive lesson. So I would go away right now and make sure you've got that whole story down in your head. You've got the street, you've got the houses, the dog houses, the dog, the cat, the elephant, the front door, back door, Gary and the avocado. Because otherwise, you're gonna struggle. And if you get this down right now, alongside the treble clef that you can find in my playlists, or the bass clef, any of which you can also find on the website along with worksheets, then you're gonna be in a good place for your first lesson, which is coming up so, so shortly. So, I hope you learned a lot. I hope this all made sense. If it didn't, please let me know in the comments and I'll make a revised version. I can fix things, I can adapt. Don't forget to visit my website and join the school. And by that, I mean just give me your email, that's all you need. I will keep you notified about every lesson that's coming up, every little bit of content and every worksheet that will help you on your journey. I only send out emails once a week. If that, I will not spam you. So, stay motivated, keep practicing, and I look forward to seeing you in your first lesson. Wow.